We're going to have a look at destructive versus non-destructive techniques. And I'm just going to show you what happens with a destructive technique first. Destructive techniques are when we physically damage the layer in which our original photograph is in. This can be easily done by somebody who's self-taught or just simply doesn't know any better. One of the ways of doing that is to use our eraser tool. If we physically erase an area from a picture, which I need to get rid of my background now because of course it stops me from doing that. If I physic whoops, physically erase, get my eraser tool first, I can erase out a section. But the thing is, now it's completely gone and I can't get that back. It's damaged those pixels. Those pixels, pixels have actually been removed. So I'm just going to step back a little bit there so that I'm not removing those images or uh, those pixels. The other way I can do this is if I actually go up to our image adjustments and let's perhaps do a curves layer on this. If I change the curves on this and make it so that it's a very contrasty sort of fashion-like photograph and click on OK, what this is doing is it's removing bits and pieces of information. Now I can't get that back. If I go back to my curves and go in the opposite direction, I can't get that information back. It's gone. And in fact, you can see the lines in the histogram here that shows me that this image has been damaged beyond um, anything that I can get back from there. So what I'm going to do again is just step backwards. So we've got our original image back. So how do we do these sorts of things without damaging photographs? Very simply, Photoshop has come up with some wonderful tools that we can use where our original photograph remains untouched and unscathed. So we can do wonderful things with it. Our adjustment um, layers that we have here allow us to do exactly what I did before. I can increase the contrast considerably using a nice little S uh, bend in the, the uh, curves adjustment layer. But the best thing about this is that it's on its own layer. If I turn it off, the original photograph is still sitting there. If I turn it on, it applies those curves to it. Let's go and add another, uh, or have a look at another um, adjustment layer. You can now see that the levels layer has got information that's physically missing. And that's because the curves layer from underneath it is changing the original image. But if I turn that curves layer off, you can see that all the information is still there and has not been removed forever. So we can do all sorts of things with our curves and our levels um, and a number of other adjustment layers in here. We've got brightness and contrast and photo filters and black and white and all sorts of wonderful things. And nothing will hurt our images if we do it through this way. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is how do I do just some nice simple vignetting, highlighting and shadow type situations. I often use um, a number of different things. It really depends on the image. Let me just get rid of these two curves and levels uh, layers on here. The easiest way of creating vignettes is with masks. Some people like to copy the layer and then I'll show you the technique, copy the layer and then multiply the image and then get a brush in the centre. Oops. Our eraser, we get this in the center. Let's make it a nice feather and then feather out that center area there, like so. And that does work quite nice if you can turn it on and off, like so. But what happens if we suddenly decide, well, actually, no, I want a bit more information in there? That's not going to cut it. So, what we can do, I'll just get rid of that layer again. We can do the same thing and we can multiply, but this time, instead of touching the individual picture itself, we can use a mask. We can add a mask down the bottom of Photoshop here and we now have this last little white area which shows us where our mask is. I can now use my black paint to paint in a hole into the mask. I always remember the black and white paint as if you're using black it creates a black hole. If you're using white it allows that uh, layer to be seen. The best thing about this is if I suddenly decide I actually want her um, eyes to be a little on the darker side, I can come in with my little brush here and I can physically paint in just the area that I might want a little bit darker. Do the other 
the side as well. And if I decide that that's a bit too much, I can always turn the opacity down. Or I might think, well, the outside's OK, but the inside's not. So let's just switch this back and turn down the flow around the eye area. And we can just lighten that up just a little bit. You can see the difference from before and after. Very simple, effective way of doing things, but I haven't injured my original photograph.